Hey, what's up guys? Now, Bitcoin is finally decoupling itself as the real safe haven asset during the time of uncertainties. In this video, I will explain why this is the case, then we'll take a look at the very important news and on-chain analytics charts that explain this current Bitcoin pump. Guys, we know there are lots of data breaches and scams on the internet, especially in cryptocurrency space. That's why I partner with Atlas VPN. VPN makes all your internet traffic travel through encrypted tunnel and hides your IP address. It masks your identity online, protects you from spying. Personally, I use Atlas VPN whenever I buy Bitcoin dips or transact with crypto. In addition to that, this VPN allows me to watch my favorite Japanese TV show that is not available in the United States. Right now, you can get a 3-year subscription for just $1.99 a month with 30 days money back guarantee. With Atlas VPN, you can enjoy blazing speed to stream your favorite TV shows, protect unlimited devices, stop ads and malware, and my favorite feature, Data Bridge Monitor. It continuously scans all public leaked databases and alerts you if they have been exposed. This VPN has more than 4.8 stars in the Apple Store. Right now, you can get the best VPN deal in the market with less than $2 a month with the link in the description box below. Okay guys, let's start with the cryptocurrency market. Cryptocurrency, especially Bitcoin, had a nice pump in the last few days as the war in Ukraine escalates. The entire market cap is now about $2 billion once again. Bitcoin diamonds increased a bit, now it's about 43%, while Ethereum diamonds remains at around 18%. As of the time this recording, Bitcoin is trading about 44,000 bucks. It had a nice spike going from 34,000 to this current price in the last few days. It gained more than $10,000 or more than 30% and actually serves as a safe human asset as Russian dictator and his puppets attacking Ukraine. Today, BTC is up by 1.6% and more than 15% of the week. It's actually third best performing asset in the top 10 listing. Market cap now rose to $840 billion. Ethereum finally broke $3,000 yet again, but not for too long. Now it's trading slightly below that price. It also rose by 30% in the last few days, just like Bitcoin. The interesting fundamental fact about Ethereum that now close to $6 billion has been burned since EIP-1559 has been implemented as it makes Ethereum more scarce. On the day it aged slightly up, similar to Bitcoin. But in the week, it's up by 12%, slightly less than Bitcoin. Terra has been pumping lately as it moves up in ranking. Now it's on the seventh spot, reaching close to $100 per coin. That's almost new all-time high. People who are holding this coin must be very happy. It's up by 8% of the day and it's up by 70% of the week. Best weekly performing asset by far. That's crazy. If Bitcoin would be up by 70% of the week, it would be near its all-time high. Solana is the second best weekly performing asset behind Terra. For the first time since a while, I see Cardano e Day being pushed far back in ranking. Now it's down to the 9th spot. Not so long ago it was on the 3rd spot. It's actually the worst performing asset on the day and the second worst performing asset on the week. It might be out of the top 10 list, just like Dogecoin. Ok, let's move on. Here we have some interesting news coming from European Union regarding Bitcoin. EU lawmakers drop Bitcoin ban from the draft of crypto regulations. Ok. European Union lawmakers have scrapped a section of the pending bill that could have made illegal for crypto services to deal in coins based on proof of work, the consensus mechanism Bitcoin and Ethereum use to mine new currency and secure the networks. The Marketing Crypto Asset Bill put European Parliament by Coalition Spreadsheet by Stefan Barger was set to vote on Monday, February 28, but it was delayed later last week after many Parliament objected to a paragraph regarding proof of work. It's surprising that such an important proposal was made by one person who probably knows nothing about Bitcoin and crypto. He proposed to ban Bitcoin because it's based on proof of work and leave shit coins because they're based on proof of stake. Give me a break. Glad smarter people identifying that issue. Here are some funny memes. While Bitcoin was declining, crypto enthusiasts were returning to the old, low paying jobs. Now Bitcoin is pumping. I got my laser's eyes back. Where are those 20k bears right now? Have fun waiting for that dip. Here's another one when Bitcoin reaches $100,000. Should you buy a house or a car? 
Best what I can do is to buy more Bitcoin. It's sad that many people are planning to sell BTC at $100,000. I actually loved it pawn shop show. Here is the great chart that represents what happened to the market during numerous wars. 4 of 5 wars, stock market rallied and the only time it dropped was during the Afghanistan war. And it dropped not because of the war, it dropped because of the dot com bubble that took place in early 2000s. American stock market has been working very well for most of the people in the past century. Russian stock market dropped by more than 50% since they invaded Ukraine. The Russian ruble was around 80 to 1 in exchange rate to US dollar one week ago, and now it's more than 110 to 1. It dropped by almost 40% since the invasion. It tells us that Putin doesn't give a shit about his people and economy. Here is another fantastic chart. We can clearly see how Bitcoin is decoupling itself from other assets and serves as a real store of value during the time of high uncertainties and war. It has been almost a week since Russia invaded Ukraine. It took place on February 24. Since then, Bitcoin increased by more than 30% while other assets also have some rise, especially crude oil. What did gold do since invasion? Gold has been flat. In fact, it's likely down since February 24. So what is the real store of value is? Gold or Bitcoin? I think the answer becomes more clear and clear. Here is the follow-up meme. Bitcoin is the coupling. Always has been. It just takes time to see it. So, the big question is why Bitcoin is spiking? Well, it's because whales with at least 1000 BTC are buying. Probably there are many Bitcoin whales in Russia and Ukraine buying this dip as a protection from the currency collapse. Last time we saw a spike like this in early 2021 when BTC increased from like $15,000 all the way till 64000 bucks. It made more than 4x in just 4 months. Could we see something similar this time? Sure we can. Now, let's take a look at this very good video where Michael Saylor gives a piece of wisdom about Bitcoin. Let's take a look. I can hold possession of a billion dollars of Bitcoin in my head, just holding a password or a set of private keys. That's a pretty big idea. Maybe the first, the first time in the history of the human race that you can actually take possession of your wealth and take it to the grave with you or take it anywhere else on earth with you. And even if I put a gun to your head, the most I can do is kill you. I can't take it. Mm -hmm. And this is a very interesting idea. Every other form of property in the history of the human race, I pull the gun, I get it all, right? My incentive is to violence. With Bitcoin, I pull the trigger, I get none of it. So the incentive is the negotiation. I'd rather have half than zero, right? And it's a very interesting idea, a big idea. <laughs> And the second big idea I is... I just got super intimidated, by the way. <clears throat> I'm, yeah, I, the second big idea is it's a, monet, it's, it's a virus. It's, it's a cyber virus. It's a, it's a chain reaction in cyberspace, or it's a life form in cyberspace. Bitcoin is a bank in cyberspace run by incorruptible software. And the software, the software itself is going to basically protect your money. The problem with software is I don't trust the computer it's on. If it's on, a, if it's on a single phone, I can seize the phone and reprogram the software. So if I came up with a bank and a bank that was run by software, how do I prevent any human being from corrupting it? The thing that makes it incorruptible is I release thousands, tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of identical copies in cyberspace and it's self-replicating. And all of the copies keep track of each other. And when one of them is corrupted, it gets kicked off the network. So you could think of it as I released a life form, plankton or a virus, and I let it go or a swarm. Now, you're a part of the swarm. I shoot you. It doesn't help. You have the genetic code. I shoot you. It doesn't help. I obliterate all of you know, the, the algae in the Atlantic won't stop it. I eliminate all of the bacteria in your body, won't stop it, right? It's a virus, it's gonna keep spreading. And the beauty of the system is, it's in essence this chain reaction in cyberspace and the only purpose of the chain reaction is to protect the integrity of the network. There will never be more than 21 million Bitcoin. So what you've got 
is, is truth and integrity released as a, as a cyber virus. Oh my gosh, Bill Gates is against Bitcoin. Peter Schiff says Bitcoin's going to zero, which I believe you said in 2013, Bitcoin's going to zero. But you flipped, you started educating and you getting a little bit more clear and then you went to a different direction. Even Orange Munger Park. recently said, Charlie Munger said the following. He says, I wish it, and this was last week, I wish it had been banned two weeks ago immediately and i admired the chinese for banning it can you imagine charlie munger a capitalist agreeing with china what you're saying is a shockwave moving through the culture you're seeing the most disruptive force in the world right now and it's slamming into people and institutions faster than they can uh, than they can absorb it and and appreciate it and understand it and this is like shockwaves in the real world, right? If I move an airfoil through the air faster than the speed of sound, the speed of sound is the rate at which air communicates with itself. The air can't get out of the way. I pound into it. I create massive turbulence and noise. The way to solve it is you go slower, but you know, then you're not supersonic. You know, Charlie Munger wasn't an advocate of Apple Computer, right? How about Amazon, right? How about, how about Microsoft, right? Warren Buffett's a friend of Bill Gates for how many years and he still hasn't bought Microsoft stock? And Microsoft is an idea that was, you know, fairly well understood 40 years ago, 30 years ago. So um, what you have is, is uh, something so powerful that everyone's being asked to have an opinion, right? Presidents, you know, the president of Russia, the president of most nation states, they're asked to have an opinion. Every investor's asked to have an opinion. But what if I told you you couldn't really understand it without 100 hours of time invested? How many people after the age of 40 spend 100 hours studying anything? You know, if, like once you get to, the, how about age of 65? You don't think a Munger, Buffett, Gates, these guys spent 100 hours studying Bitcoin? Aren't you sure they didn't? Isn't it obvious? I, I would say it's almost certain that he hasn't spent 10 hours. And so... I, like, I, I would say the same with most macro investors, though, right now. You know what? I, I would say the same with a lot of crypto investors. The world is full of... <laughs> okay, how many people... I mean, I see it because I see it in my feed. Most people yeah. in the crypto space have spent 100 hours studying this. How many people have spent 100 hours studying the stock that they hold in their portfolio? True. How many people spent 100 hours studying Facebook? I, I'm actually saying that people should do the research until they get the conviction necessary to make their own decision. Look, I, like at the end of the day, this is property. I don't run a, I, I'm not promoting my own security. I'm right. not promoting an exchange. I'm basically suggesting go west, young man, get some land. Right. It's like go get go go to America. Right. Get some property mm -hmm. and make a life for yourself. But you decide whether you're wanting to do that or not. Here's the more important point, though. It's every single influential person in the world is being asked to have an opinion, but they're not spending 100 hours on the opinion. If I roll the clock back 100 years and I went to every politician and every rich person mm -hmm. in the world in the year 1900 and I asked them what they thought about electricity, what do you think they'd say? Right. How about, how about airplanes in the year 1904? What was the opinion then? I like Michael Saylor's response to famous investors criticizing and condemning Bitcoin, including Bill Gates, Pete the Chief, Warren Buffett, Charlie Mungo, and so on. Pete the Chief probably shouldn't be there because he's not like a billionaire or anything. Michael Saylor responded, it's like a shockwave moving into the culture. Just like electricity emerged in late 1800s, just like planes started to fly in early 1900s, and just like internet changed people's life in late 1990s. The same way Bitcoin is emerging. First, they hate it, then they become curious, then they adopt it. Let me know what you guys think. When will Bitcoin reach full adoption? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Smash that like button and subscribe for more videos.